Oh, I don't know. This sorry. is supposed to be spiritually edifying. <laughs> GMBA Youthcast. Hello, everybody. You're probably used to seeing Jared's lovely face here on the screen, but um, Jared is a guest on today's podcast, so you're stuck with me. My name is Jonathan, also known as Brother Jonathan, also known as the brother of Jared. Um, and I'm from Arizona, and that's all you need to know about me. Uh, how about our other guest we have today? Hello, my name is Alyssa Maddox, and I'm from the other side of the country in Lake Worth, Florida. My name is Armando Sanchez from the Bell Branch in California. My brother Jared from uh, Mesa, Arizona, and... Uh... Happy to be a guest on the YouthCast today. Great. All right, so let's get started here today. Um, the goal of this this YouthCast was to maybe just share a little bit about faith building experiences from your youth, from those uh, late high school, early college age days. And um, Alyssa, you had something you wanted to, an experience or, or something that happened to you that you wanted to share. Yeah, and uh, mine's pretty recent. I am getting my master's degree um, in school counseling. And I'm coming to the end of my program. I'll graduate in just a few months. And I needed to um, do an internship. Um, And typically in the university, they just place you in a school and you work for free, pretty much shadowing another counselor and learning um, until you graduate. Well, are you are you living by yourself at this point or? Yeah, Yeah, I'm living alone. I have mortgage and bills and all of that. Um, So I really didn't have a choice but to find something that would pay me. Um, I was in a time frame to get an internship by um, beginning of May, and I was going on interviews, and I was feeling like I had good opportunities. I felt like things were working where I was finding principals who were willing to hire me, um, even though I wasn't certified, but I just kept getting closed doors, and just things weren't working, and HR wasn't willing to hire me, so it was like a district-wide issue, and I just was really discouraged because... If I didn't find that opportunity, then I didn't know what I would do. I mean, at one point I was so desperate that I got a flyer in my Chipotle um, dinner that said, now hiring with benefits. And I was like, maybe this is my answer. Are you praying about this? Are you, you know, knowing you, I'm assuming you are. Yes. I actually started fasting and praying. um, And I purposely, like, I wanted it to be a meaningful time of prayer So I ended up fasting from social media for quite a few months um, and really used that time to pray about it and just be really intentional about like asking God to provide a way because like my human mind couldn't find one. You seem so like all together and kind of even keeled. Like, were you stressed out or? or Oh, yeah. No, I was very stressed. I I just felt like everything that I had an answer to in my mind just kept getting closed down, just dead end after dead end. And it was just frustrating because I was running out of time. I had a specific day that I had to get this done by, and we were just getting closer and closer and closer. And somebody who, like myself, who is a planner, that was really hard because I wanted to have it done in plenty of time. I wanted to have it worked out, and it just wasn't. So, yeah, definitely stressed. Okay, so... What happened? So I get a phone call from um, my assistant principal at the time who she said, I have an, I have an idea for you. I know somebody who's looking for a counselor. And so I called this person, another school in the area and I talked to her and it was maybe like a three minute conversation. She did not ask me any interview questions. She did not, was not like an official process. She just said, we're going to make it work. Um, and she did, she ended up creating a job just for me that that school has never had before where I could be hired, not certified, where I could work to get my internship hours. Um, and it was in a job that I never applied for. I never interviewed for, it was never posted about, it was never advertised. Um, and that's where I work now. And it's, I'm the only one in my, um, cohort of graduate students that have a paid internship. Wow. How many other, how many other um, colleagues are in your program? There's about 10 of us in my cohort and I'm the only one that has a paid internship. Wow. Thank God. How close to the deadline was it 
when you finally, um, when there was finally a breakthrough? So that conversation was a week before the deadline and I had to then get approval. So when she had this idea, the district had to approve her, me in this position and other people who have gone through a similar process with the new job, it's taken four or five weeks for that approval to happen. But I only had like four or five days. Um, and I got that approval in two days. And then, wow. yeah, all right before the deadline. How many months had you been applying? Oh, five months. Five months of applying. And the final week is when this breakthrough came, when the mm -hmm. Lord provided an answer. Have you got to work with any kids yet? Yeah, I just started. I'm in week two. Um, and it's cool because in this, it's a, it's a hard job and it's a hard school and um, a difficult transition, but knowing clearly that God placed me here, that he provided this opportunity, it's kind of changed my perspective with work. I feel like I am there to be used by him. I'm there to kind of bring a light to these, these students and these um, faculty that I work with. So it really has shifted my perspective with work because it's more about how I can be used by him in this natural profession. Yeah, that's awesome. If he puts you there, he puts you there for a reason. You're mm -hmm. there to shine the light of Christ in some way to those kids, to your coworkers. And that's, that's really awesome. I think that it can encourage anybody who's kind of having that same feeling I was of just getting to more dead ends and not knowing what to do next. Because through that process, I learned that even if I don't know the way, if I don't know the plan, God has it figured out. And so just having that, that faith in that, I think is something to, we can all be encouraged by. If you had to pick a scripture um, that applies to, to your, what you went through, what would it be? I have thought of John 14, four, it says, and whether I go, you know, and the way, you know, because God clearly knew this is the way that he had for me. This is a way that he prepared and he planned. And I just get to follow in that. All right. So let's, uh, let's, let's jump over to Armando now. Armando, what's the, tell us a little bit about this experience you want to share with us. I was, um, I believe I was in my second year of community college and I was in a state where I think I was already baptized for around maybe five or six years. I was baptized at the age of 14 um, and I was privileged and blessed enough to have grown up with a lot of young people in my branch. Um, however, a couple years passed and due to uh, just circumstances of life, um, some young people had to move away to other branches. Other young people um, unfortunately uh, focused on other things like school or work so they weren't coming to church as often and I was, I was at a point where I was pretty much alone. Um, I felt alone as well in my own branch. So in that period of time, um, I kind of looked around and I saw, hey, you know, there's a lot of need um, for people to do God's work in our branch. For our young people, there wasn't really anyone to encourage them, no one to uh, focus and zone in on them. And you're and you're 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 saying you're you were about 19 at the time. I was like 18, 19 at the time. Yeah. What were your next steps? I was in college. I was uh, looking for a job and, and I was asking the Lord. I, I was definitely praying. That was when one evening, Brother uh, Brian McDonald, sorry, Ryan McDonald uh, invited me over to have uh, dinner with him. And in that, we had a conversation and he asked me those exact questions. He said, how do you view the church and how do you view your own spiritual life? And I said, well, I see this need, but at the same time, I feel like I am not the right person for this. Like, I keep feeling this need and seeing the need around, but I felt like I was very unworthy to just say, oh, I'll do it. Because I was struggling with uh, just focusing on school because I'm the first in my family to go to college. So I was going in blind and I was, I was asking the Lord to help me with that. Not to mention, um, I felt a little discouraged because I thought, well, what if I'm not the right person? What if I lead them, but I'm not the right leader? What if I... What if I try to take on these responsibilities, but I'm, I fail? And that was kind of like my own self-struggle or my self-doubt. And he said, well, let's pray about it because um, the ministry actually wanted to approach you to, to see if you'd be, if you felt the calling of a deacon. So in that moment, I felt like, yes, this is what I've been asking the Lord for. But at the same time, I was having this inner struggle to say, yes, Lord, this is, I want to say yes. You felt inadequate or unworthy 
it was a very like internal dilemma but i felt like the lord was slowly presenting the 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 idea in my mind that hey i'm i'm calling you to to take up that role can you share how the lord answered you definitely <laughs> a year had passed um after that and i was praying i was i was asking the lord to help me and i remember i had a dream where i was surrounded by uh the young people and the people of the church and we were all sitting in a pew and i remember that young people were being called up and each one of them was receiving either a medal or a trophy or a plaque which represented in my heart i knew that those represented blessings and i remember that the brother that was giving them out he called my name he said armando and i looked up i had my head down in the dream and i look up and i said did he call my name? And Jared looked over, my cousin Jared looked over and he said, yes, he called you. But when I wanted to get up, he moved on to the next person. So I was like, no, maybe I just made it up. And I felt bad again because I said, oh, he passed me by. I missed my chance. And then the last part of the dream, we were all heading to the service, to this event that was transcribing through the dream. And I remember that there was a lot of people, a lot of families heading to this church service. And I meet up with Brother David and Brother Josh Bignola. And Brother David was um, in a rush to kind of get everything organized. And Brother Josh Bignola at the time was there as well. And he said, hey, we need help. We need young people to, to, to come and help us because there's not enough. And he looks over to me and he says, hey, can he do it? Have you spoken with him? And he, he, he doesn't say anything to me directly, but he kind of just shrugs, like looking at me like, hey, do you, do you want to work for me? And I, I remember waking up from that dream and I remember receiving the confirmation that I was looking for and pretty much saying the Lord telling me do you want to work for me do you want to let go of everything let go of yourself and let the Lord perfect everything else that needs to be perfected all my worries all my insecurities all my doubts um, the Lord was pretty much telling me do you want to let me take care of the rest and I think that ties in um, to the scripture that I had it's found in Psalms 138 um, verse 8, and it says, The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. And when I read that scripture, I realized that we're the work in the Lord's hands, and He's constantly perfecting it. We just have to allow Him. And as, as it says in the scriptures, uh, He'll perfect whatever uh, concerns us in our lives. I guess in the dream, I mean, he was kind of showing you too. You could let it pass by if you wanted. He wasn't forcing you. And at the same time, he was reassuring you that um, if you accepted, he was going to be there with you. You talked about some of the needs that you saw. You talked about how the Lord um, revealed himself to you so that you accepted the role of a deacon. Now that you're, you're ordained a deacon, how has the Lord helped you uh, fulfill some of those needs? The Lord has given me the opportunity to um, direct our young people through the MBA. So for, for our listeners, we're throwing around this word MBA. Some of you are thinking, what, is this a master's of business administration or, or what is an MBA? MBA stand, in, our, in the Church of Jesus Christ uh, stands for the Missionary Benevolent Association. It's an organization in each branch where the young people are um, given leadership roles and encouraged in some way to support missionary efforts or to um, uplift and encourage the youth or, or serve in the mission field in some way. So that's what the MBA stands for. What would you say is uh, one of your favorite or most successful activities or events that you've done with the MBA? One that's really dear to me is the first one we did this year in Hemet. Um, we were actually like co hosting it and I was kind of thrown into the to the mix like last minute I, I know you got sick so you couldn't make it but I thank God that that happened because it kind of showed me like hey you have to be ready at all times you have <laughs> to be thanking God that I got sick so that you had to well, run the whole thing no, no no not that you got sick but that there were like that the Lord in spite of everything he provided and it was such a blessing because I, I've never been in that position where I had to step like step up in that literal sense for an event. And I feel like all of that was for the honor and glory of God. It was nothing that I did, nothing that I had like organized or prepared, but the Lord truly directed the young people at that, that event. And that was really special. And I remember you guys, um, you had a bunch of strings 
and each person held a single string and they tied them to the hitch of a 15 passenger van. And um, you guys were seeing how if everyone, every person, individual pulls on their string, they can pull the whole van. And um, I remember I saw in the video that there was even like, you got to the point where you had like 20 young people pulling and then you had another 20 people, young people in the van, like weighing it down to see if they could stop it. Uh, that was pretty cool. And you guys did canvassing in the community. And you guys got some visitors to Hemet too. The presiding elder, he was extremely worried when I got sick and I told him I wasn't going to be there because he doesn't know you. He was like, Armando, who's going to be in charge? <laughs> and then after the fact, I talked to him and he was like, I thought this whole thing was going to fall apart. I thought it was going to be a giant fiasco. And, and the Lord blessed it immensely. He said, our, our young people were so hungry for something and um everyone pitched in with cooking the food with the transportation with um providing lodging and uh even uh getting hotel rooms for some of the kids everything came together it was a huge a huge success praise god anybody else have any other questions or thoughts on this i think during that time where you were kind of looking around your branch and seeing this need and seeing um, other young people leaving, it might've been easy for you to like leave as well and to like not, not be used by him. But I think it's a great lesson for us to like not give up, right. Not just want to go away because it's hard or it's difficult, but to kind of have that desire to be used by him and to make a difference. Um, because I'm sure that your efforts are blessing so many people on that branch. There have been times where I felt like, oh, maybe I'm just not feeling connected spiritually, or maybe church isn't giving me what I wanted. Like you're talking about, there weren't as many young people as there once were. And I can start to be like, oh, this stinks for me. Like, well, I guess I'm not going to get a blessing. And when I flip it to be like, how can I be a blessing to other people? All of a sudden, I get way more blessed out of it. And it, and that kind of seems like that's what came through in when you were telling your testimony. We're all gonna be, there's all gonna be moments when maybe we're not feeling engaged or whatever. And thank God that there was some brothers that, that, that reached out to you and the Lord directed you in a certain way. And our prayer is that through these young people activities, those other ones that are maybe have drifted a little bit, that they'll come back and the Lord will do the same thing for them and give them a mission and give them a purpose. And, um, and, and, and they'll be welcomed right back into the, into the family of Christ. So I, I think that's really awesome. Well, Jared, the pressure's on because you're the last one and we've heard two really great experiences. So yeah, I, I what have you got for us today? I originally was thinking of sharing one experience, but I changed my mind. I'm going to share a different one. Basically the, the last couple of years, um, I've been having like a, a, a health struggle and I was for a while, very distressed about it, stressed out. I don't know how things are going to turn out. And I was very fixated on it and it was causing me tons of like anxiety and stuff. And I remember realizing over time, like, okay, I need to figure out how to have peace about this. And, and sometimes I have peace and other times I don't. And I remember trying to pray about how can I have peace about this? And there was a scripture that stood out to me. It's in Isaiah uh, 26 chapter, the third verse, it says, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And so I was like, okay, this scripture tells me if my mind's focused on the Lord, then I can have peace, perfect peace. But how can I, how can I do that? How can I keep my mind fixated on the Lord instead of fixated on myself and my situation? So for fun, sometimes I like to record music. And one day uh, I went, wanted to buy a device to record some music on my computer. I met this guy from OfferUp. And I got there and I realized, oh no, I bought, I, this is the wrong thing. This is not the thing I wanted to buy. This guy, he's selling like a podcast starter bundle and I'm not trying to buy that. It has the piece that I want, but a bunch of other garbage that I'm not looking for, but it was a good deal. So I just bought it anyway. So one week later, uh, I went to GMBA conference. So GMBA, it's the, the larger general MBA. And I went to this conference having no intention of being involved at all because I was like, oh no, I'm, 
I'm in this challenging situation, so I can't do take on any responsibilities. Well, I got there, and a couple of brothers were like, Jared, we think that you should be the new GMBA librarian. And we want you to like create like digital content and maybe some kind of videos or posts on social media throughout the year. And I was like, well, that sounds like a big responsibility. You better give me, you know, a few weeks to pray about it. They're like, the meeting is in 30 minutes. So you need to decide by then. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to step out on faith. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go for it. So I, I, I accepted this role. And one of the first things is they're like, you know, we had tried a podcast a while back. Do you think you could maybe start up a podcast again? And I was like, oh, my goodness. One week ago, I accidentally bought a podcast starter bundle. So to me, I felt like it was a confirmation that God was putting me in this role intentionally, that this is what I was meant to do. This is the work that God was calling me to do. On the other hand, in my job, I knew someday I wanted to advance and become a data scientist. So I decided to enroll in a, in a program to, to get some more certification and stuff towards that goal. So I signed up for a few classes. And at first, these classes were super time consuming. I had all this homework and stuff. And I was like, you know, I don't think I can take all these classes and also do this new role I have, which is supposed to be creating content for, for the young people. And so... I was prayed about it and I decided I'm going to drop some of my classes so I can focus more on doing this, this role in the GMBA. It will take me longer to get a certification, but I felt like this is a calling that God has given me. It's more important to focus on that first. And in the past, when I put God first, you know what? He works it out one way or another, and I never regretted it before. So I started, uh, I started creating that the videos for this YouTube channel that this video is going to be posted on and the peace that God promised through his word, I was finding when I was focused on what is God calling me to do to serve others and to bless others, all of a sudden I, I wasn't anxious about my situation anymore. Like I had been. So that was a big answer to prayer. And then I had a meeting with my boss and he was like, Hey, by the way, we decided we were going to promote you to be a data scientist and we'll just train you on the job for it. And I was like, whoa, that's exactly what I wanted to do. And I was thinking I need to do this big extended program for a few years until eventually I could get there. And it just kind of like happened way sooner than I wanted. And I was like thankful that I didn't like spend all this immense time consumed by that. And instead I focused on the Lord. I had had the peace that I've been seeking. I had tons of blessings out of it. And and then God took care of the other stuff in my life better than I even expected or could ask or have thought of. So uh, I dropped out of the other program I was in, and it's been a super huge blessing. So I guess the moral, the moral was, you know, seek God first, and his word is actually true, that he'll take care of the other details in your life. And, you know, it's kind of counterintuitive. You could think, I have to fixate on myself all the time so that I will be taken care of. When you flip it and say, I'm going to set aside time to seek the Lord first and ask God how we can use the different gifts and talents he's given me to bless others, all of a sudden you'll find in your life that God will take care of your own needs better than you expected. Jared, how long did it take you to come to that realization um, to stop trying to focus on yourself and fixing your problem, in this case, your health issue? and redirect all that energy outwards towards serving the Lord. How long did it take you to come to that point? It took a couple of years because um, I think at first, you know, with, with the diagnosis I got, it's something that it is likely to have an impact for the rest of my life. And so I had to let go of my expectations for how certain things in my life were gonna go. And that was a process. I guess I didn't realize it at the time, but that was a process of, mourning or grieving, you could say. And, and honestly, one of the things that got me through that was uh, I, had, I was, went looking for old te- recordings of old testimonies and sermons, and I would listen to those like every day just to get me through to the next day because I was at a very low point. And so when they asked me if I wanted to have this role creating digital content, 
I went back to that time in my life and was like, I want to create a resource for anyone who might be going through a challenging time that they could find a rich library of faith building resources. Wow. I, yeah. Thanks for sharing that because, um, uh, it's a, it's a process. It took time. It wasn't like it was Jared's just this golden child that, uh, so, uh, a problem comes his way and then the <laughs> next day he, he wakes up and he says, well, I know the solution. I'm just going to serve the Lord more. No, it no. All work out. I mean, it took a little time for you to, to, to go through all that. I think it's interesting that you didn't know before you started this librarian role, you didn't do it with the purpose of getting peace, right? You didn't start this knowing that God was going to provide that peace and that clarity in your life. But you just going out on faith and working for him, he provided what you needed, which I think is cool to think about now on the back end where you can see like he answered everything you were wanting for years just because you decided to work for him. There was a long time where I was making excuses saying, oh, I can't work for God because I got the situation in my life. Not realizing everyone has a situation in their life. It happens and mine's related to the health. Some people have family situations in their life that they deal with their whole life or some people have financial things or everyone has something they're dealing with and that's why we all need each other is that we we all have something to offer and encourage each other the lord has definitely been working for our lives and as brother jonathan said um maybe it wasn't as easy at first maybe like we're, we're seeing the end pro product of everything but there was a struggle to get there it wasn't just like oh sister um Alyssa, she automatically got the job she was looking for or jared um, your your prayers were answered and you had peace or, or for me in my own life it wasn't just like oh look everything was paved perfectly but rather the perfection is found in like the Lord taking care of us during the lows and he's ultimately the one that takes us to like the, the where we are today there's a lot of metaphors in the scripture about how gold has to go through a fire in order to be refined and so I can see in retrospect that even though is not fun to go through it sometimes it gets tough sometimes it's like god's process is perfect his timing is perfect and and it's all for our good in the end and the best is yet to come jared and Alyssa and armando it, it, serving the lord i mean the best is yet to come that's been my experience so i guess just kind of wrapping things up and i, I want to thank you three uh guests um, brother Jared, sister, listen, brother Armando for, um, sharing, I guess my takeaway from this today is there's going to be down points, low points. There's going to be trials or challenges in our life. And those are the moments when we have the choice, um, how we're going to react. We might not, it might take us a little time to get there. We might not always immediately say, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to draw closer to the Lord. I'm going to fast and pray, or I'm going to, I'm going to turn my need outwards and focus on others. But if we're, if we're prayerful, if we're focused on the Lord, he'll get us to that point eventually. And then that's when the Lord can bless us. And oftentimes it's through blessing others that we are, that we are blessed. Each one of you spoke about how in an answer to your prayer, um, Alyssa is, shining the light of Christ with the kids at, at her at her job. She feels like the Lord put her there to serve others with a, with a purpose. Armando is now, when he was feeling like, I'm all alone in this branch, there's no young people with me. He's now in a role where he's the one organizing activities to draw the young people together. And he's uplifting and encouraging other young people and elderly, and he's being uplifted and encouraged. And Jared, likewise, when he was seeking peace and thinking, oh, I need to focus all my energy on fixing this problem inwardly, the Lord eventually showed him, turned it around and said, no, focus your attention outwards and blessing others. And then he was able to be a recipient and find peace of the blessings that he received from, from others. So that's kind of a, a beautiful testimony. I thank you each for, for sharing today. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed um, sharing my testimony with you guys. Thank you for having me. It was a blessing to share these testimonies, and uh, it was a blessing to hear them too. You know, I could get used to this job. I mean, <laughs> this is this is pretty cool. So no, um, no, you watch your job. <laughs> I'm Nola from Farmington Hills, Michigan. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share this with someone you know. Thank you. I might right. make
maybe I'll come up with like an alternate. Instead of the GMBA youth cast, I'll like do the GMBA approaching middle age cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would I would subscribe to that.